Hi everyone, my name is Alex. Today I'm going to be trying the NBD Project Sun Balm SPF 30. This product retails for $24. Just complete transparency, NBD Project did reach out and send me these, but they did not ask me to do a dedicated review on it. I didn't want to do this myself because I was a fan of their original mineral sunscreen. And this actually makes me want to talk about something that I learned after doing that review, something with their lip sunscreen and also their mineral sunscreen that I have recently tried. I'm going to make a dedicated update on this as well, but the NBD Project sunscreen advertises itself to be 100% mineral, which is true, kind of. Current studies have shown that there is an ingredient in here that can act as an SPF booster, and it replicates the same filter as a chemical sunscreen. From my understanding, definitely check out some experts who have talked about this, but this lip SPF includes it as well, which there's nothing wrong with that. I love an extra SPF booster, and there's nothing wrong with getting more protection. My only flaw with it lies within the marketing. It's not technically a 100% mineral sunscreen even though zinc oxide is the only advertised sunscreen filter there is a chemical filter in here as well that is pretty high up on the ingredient list at least what current studies are showing skincare is always changing similar to science and so but I did want to bring light to it I am going into this review where it doesn't matter if it is a 100% mineral sunscreen or if it has that booster in it I personally don't have a sensitivity to chemical filters but if you do definitely look out for that ingredient and be aware of it and I wanted to share that just as an update and where I currently stand on these sunscreens. This product does come in three different tints and I was sent all three. I will be trying out I think the pink one. I'm not sure which one I want to use but I am mainly just going to be testing this product on how it feels and how it performs. This product is vegan, cruelty free, alcohol free, and comes aerosolable packaging. They do have some added fragrance in this product. The main things I'll be looking for with it include how does it feel on the lips. Does it taste weird because I've noticed that does happen with some lip SPFs and also what finish does it leave on the lips. As for anything else, I'll be continuing to do check-ins. So I will see you all in the next check-in. Hi everyone, I'm here to give you all a quick check-in on this product. I have been using it a couple of times when I am outside because obviously it is a lip SPF. I've noticed that going on the lips, it does feel very nice. It is nourishing, which I do enjoy. And the zinc is not drying in this product, which I have seen with other lip products. I am currently using the lightest pink shade and that's what I found to be the most natural. They did opt for tinted versions because a zinc lip product is not gonna be very pretty. It does come out pretty thick and what I've noticed is, well, maybe if it does come out, but this is where some of the problem lies. It is a little bit thick and it comes out kind of like splotchy. It, you know, like it kind of does that. Not too big of an issue, but just something to keep in mind. Now, this sunscreen, after wearing over time, does kind of get just a little bit chalky, I would say. That is what I noticed feel-wise. It's really nice and nourishing at first. It has a nice flavor to it. It doesn't taste bad, which I worried about with a zinc sunscreen. You can see there, this pink shade is very natural. Does give a little bit of color to the lips, but I definitely feel like this is one of my favorite sunscreens that I have tried for the lips. And I told you all about everything with this sunscreen, so it's not technically a 100% mineral sunscreen, at least with current studies. It is still very nice. It leaves a nice hydrated finish. I feel like it is a very nourishing lip SPF, at least at first. I'm just not so sure about the wear. I've only worn it a couple of times, so I will keep you posted on that. But at the moment, that is what I'm noticing. It's not anything terrible. And usually I only use lip SPF for when I'm gonna be outside. And usually I am able to reapply this product. I am gonna see if it does become too thick the more that I use it. It, but instantly it does give a nice nourishing benefit. I will just have to keep you all posted on how it continues to perform. So I will see you all in the next check. -in. Hi everyone, I'm back to give you all my final thoughts on this lip balm. Keep in mind that I am going to be judging this lip balm based off of a hybrid formula, even though it is marketed as a mineral formula. This lip SCF was really impressive in my opinion, and I did enjoy my experience with it. So when it comes to drying down and the issue that I was talking about last time, 
time with this product. It seemed to go away the more that I used it, and that was a temporary problem. Considering a lot of lip SPFs that I have tried, it is one of the most lightweight and nourishing versions of a lip SPF. The pink was what I found to be the most natural for my skin tone, and I really enjoyed that shade. My only complaint with it is if you are planning on reapplying this product, it can get a little bit thick on the lips, especially with the tint. It did last a fairly long time. It didn't move once it was on my lips. And additionally, it was fairly lightweight with just one layer. The more I started to reapply it was when I started to struggle a little bit more with this product. It didn't leave a bitter taste, which is a complaint that I've had with a lot of lip SPFs before. The Sun By Me is still one of my favorite, most lightweight and nourishing products that is a little bit more affordable. That's just another alternative to this. I did notice just a little bit of a bitter taste compared to this product. The fragrance that they have included in this has helped that out just a little bit. But overall, after the last check-in, I noticed that it didn't feel very drying and it wasn't bitter whatsoever. It wasn't something that I experienced consistently with this product where I feel like it is an issue, but it wasn't something that I continued to be an issue with this lip product. And so I feel like if you are looking for a mainly mineral hybrid lip SPF, at least with current studies that I have seen on the filters in this product, and this would be a wonderful option. My only issue with this product lies in the marketing of calling it a 100% mineral sunscreen because they do include the chemical booster in it. The only reason I would find that to be an issue is if you are sensitive to chemical filters, I would just be careful of that. But overall, this was a great option in my opinion. I'm personally able to use it. I'm personally able to tolerate fragrance and I loved using this product right before I would go outside. It is crucial to apply the lip SPF before going out in the sun, especially in the summer. And so that is why I would recommend this product. I felt like it was a great tinted option. Like I said, the light pink was the best version for me. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe because I post new videos every week and I will see you all in the next review.